Hi, and welcome to Sanborn's Oblique Analyst site. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about how to navigate the site and what tools are available to you. As you can see, imagery is really important on this site. It takes up the majority of the view, and for the most part, the tools are hidden and out of the way. We have a sidebar to the right and to the left, which will open when needed to present more information. We have the ability to zoom in and to zoom out and to turn on what layers are available to us. For example, if I wanted to turn the roads off, I could do that here, or I can turn them back on. I'll leave them on for now. And then we have the main toolbar area, and the tools can be thought of in three major groups. We have navigation tools, measurement tools, and annotation tools. Let's talk a little bit about navigation. Similar to a map application, you can click and drag to pan around the imagery, and you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and to zoom out. Oblique images are different than a standard map, however. That is, when the images are being acquired, five images are actually acquired at one point in time. We have the standard top-down view, but then we also have each of the cardinal directions. In order to view those, we need to tell the site where to anchor our view, and we're going to go ahead and do that now. If we click on the Set Location tool, which looks like a little target, we can click on the view, and it brings up the other views that are available to us in the right-hand sidebar. I want to look at this entryway, so I'm going to choose From the East, and when I click on it, you can see that my view has changed to be From the East. Let me go ahead and change the sidebar. I can still navigate around in this view. If I'd like to click and drag, I can pan the image around, and I can still zoom in and zoom out. If I'd like to change to another view, I can open the sidebar again and choose another view, but there's an easier way. Let's talk a little bit about this compass in the bottom of the screen. This compass always points to the north, and is showing us our current view. We chose from the east, so you can see that the view that is highlighted is from the east. If I'd like to look at this view from the north, I can simply move over here, and you can see it previews what the image is going to look like from the north. And when I click, the image changes to look at our target location from the north. It's kind of hard to see this entryway from the north. Maybe from the south would be a better view. And there it is. Another thing I'd like to point out about navigation, if we go back to our From the East view, and that is navigation in these views is a little different than a standard map. In a standard map, north is almost always towards the top of your screen. We have a navigation map available to us. If we click in the bottom right-hand corner, it'll open a standard map view with north towards the top of the screen. Then, as we navigate around the oblique view, we can see in the map view which direction we're actually headed. I'll go ahead and close that for now. Let's go to the top view. Pan over here, and let's clear our current anchor point. And let's go look at another building to do some measurements. We could measure this building, but I feel like moving around a little bit. Let's go ahead and measure this wall right here. Measuring this wall from the top view isn't really easy to do, so let's choose another view to look at. So, let's set our anchor point. We'll come in here and say we're interested in this view. And then, we want to look from the north. That's a good view of this wall. In order to measure the height of this wall, I'm going to click on the Height tool up here in the toolbar. I'm going to come down to the wall, and I'm going to start at the base and click once. And then I'm going to simply start dragging up until I make it to the top of the wall, and then click again. And you can see that this wall is 25 feet in height. Let's go ahead and clear that to make it easier to see another measurement. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, because what I'd like to do is I'd like to measure the top of this roof line. And we can do that with a linear measurement tool. So let me click on the line measuring tool, click on the top of this roof, 
and start dragging over here. And you can see that that line, if I double click to end my measurement, that line is 31 feet long. Speaking of double clicking the end of measurement, our line measuring tool allows us to do complex line shapes. Let me show you an example of that. I'll clear my measurement so it's easier to see. And let's measure the perimeter of this part of the roof right here. To do that, I'm in my line tool, so I simply click, drag to my first point, and click again once, and then drag out to the other points around the roof. And then double click to end. And you can see that the perimeter of the roof is 40 feet. We'll clear that measurement, and let's do an area measurement. I saw over here, let's go to the top down view, it might be easier to see and then zoom out a little. We have some sort of parking structure here. So let's go ahead and measure the area of the roof of this parking structure. I'll go ahead and do that by clicking on the area tool and then simply tracing the outline of this roof. And then double click to end. And you can see that this roof is 871 square feet. I'll go ahead and clear that. And the final thing I'd like to show for a measurement tool is how to measure a slope. And let's go ahead and look at this piece of this roof right here. To measure a slope, I'm going to go ahead and click on the slope tool and trace that line. And when I click the second time, you'll notice that it says switch to another view. What it's trying to do here is get us to show the view from multiple angles so that it can determine the slope properly. So let's look from the north again. We were on this part of the roof, so now to finish the measurement, we click, and then we trace down and click again, and you can see that the slope is 42% or 23 degrees. The other tools that we have available to us, let's go ahead and center our measurement a little bit more, have to do with annotation. We have the ability to put a point on the map, to draw lines, to draw areas, or to put in text. For example, if we click on the text tool, we can come in here and we can say that this is a roofing project, for example, and then hit return, and we've annotated this view. This would allow us to do many things. We could do measurements of a roof. We could show landscaping and what we'd like to change there. Anything you can think of, you can annotate using these tools. And then we can always choose to export to a PDF. And if we click on the PDF, it'll open a new view. It takes just a second. And it's going to show us both the imagery that we had along with our annotations. And from here, we could save this PDF or we could email it off to somebody else. I'll go ahead and close that window and go back to the main Oblique Analyst window. We'll close the sidebar. And that pretty much completes our overview. I want to thank you for your time and your interest in Sanborn's Oblique Analyst.